Welcome to worship. I'm Holly Morrison, the pastor of Phippsburg Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. And no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. And today here can be anywhere that you are. Um, we started this morning in our sanctuary and the technology did not agree with the desire to be gathered in Christ um, that was in our hearts. And so I am re-recording um, the, the core of the service from this morning's uh, gathering so that I can share it with all of you who are staying home to be safe. So now my friends, scattered by circumstance yet bound together by blessings, we come to worship God. Let us take a moment to rest in the grace of this day, to draw the deep breath of God's Spirit into our bodies, and let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Let us be thankful to God, drawn into possibility by God's breath in our lungs, God's light in our eyes, and the gift of another day. We come to listen, to learn, to love, to sing, and to serve. God, we ask that you guide our worship and hold us close to your great heart. Following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We take time in worship for sharing the prayers of our community. And so I invite you to be with me in the spirit of prayer. Today we lift up the thanksgiving of the birthdays of Bernice Knight and Tom Stenquist for all of the gifts of their lives and all of the ways their gifts have blessed our community. We lift up today concerns for the Ukraine, as troops gather on their borders, for Tonga as an underground volcano's eruption has severed their connection to the world through communication and imperiled their environment and put at risk many others with the tsunami that spread across the Pacific from that explosion. We lift up the people of Haiti struggling with both the aftermath of natural disasters and continued political unrest for all of the blessings of their history and all of the resilience of their people. We pray that God's love and our love be surrounding them. We lift up as well the concern for all of those who live on the streets, for all of those who go hungry, for those who, even though they have a roof over their head, are still imperiled by these cold days, those who cannot afford fuel, those who are unsafe in their homes. We lift up all of these, entrusting them to God's care and heeding God's call to be God's hands and feet in response to these needs. We also offer up a thanksgiving today for the skilled negotiators and all of the Jews and Muslims and Christians and people of other traditions and people of no faith who joined together in holding in their hearts yesterday, Congregation Beth Israel in Coryville, Texas 
the skilled negotiators were able to bring all of the hostages out of the synagogue alive. But we do continue to hold in prayer the hostage taker whose life was lost for all of the pain and all of the rage that motivated him for all of the questions that remain. We hold all of these in prayer. And now I want to share a very special Thanksgiving indeed from Lori Simpson. As most of you know, Lori's husband and son participated in a tremendous act of gift giving this week. Robbie gave a kidney as a living donor to his father. And here is Lori's letter of praise to be shared with us. Reading an excerpt from her letter, she writes, all is very well. The surgery a success, the match a success. There is the searing discomfort around incisions for both platelet count and blood sugar being watched in Chip, who may come home sometime on Sunday. Robbie is home. For him, sitting and walking are painful, but lying down and standing provide relief and comfort, something the hospital setting did not. She writes, Chipper and I endured the torturous waiting and waiting, and finally a text from Haley that all was well, eased the pressure around the Hoover Dam I had constructed to keep the torrent of potential tragedy from drowning me. Chip's surgeon rang and revealed the reason for longer than expected surgery. He had to perform reconstructive surgery, paring down a super kidney from Robbie to match Chip's physiology. So Lori writes, that is the news, but here is my gratitude. Chip has endured a year with numbers that not only should have demanded dialysis, but put him in the grave. And yet no one would have known. He was able to reach this point because of the constant buoying love of this congregation and all those beyond these doors. Your love and their love helped in creating this miracle. My gratitude to all is boundless. My love for you is boundless. What you have given Chip and our family is beyond measure. And the only repayment is to love extravagantly you at Phippsburg Congregational Church, every other person on the planet, every atom of creation that points to the unconditional love of God. Humbly, thank you, Lori Simpson. So we share Lori's testimony and her praise and her thanksgiving. Our hearts are joined. And we continue to pray for Robbie and Chip's continued healing from that living donor surgery. Now, my friends, let us take some time in silence to bring all that we are and all that we long for to the one who hears us even before we ask, the one who knows us even more deeply than we know ourselves. Let us bring our prayers to God in silence. God, on this cold winter day, we lift up to you all of these fires that warm us, the fire of life giving life, sharing between people, the fire of those who continue to seek justice and peace in your name, the fire of memory that burns bright for those we have loved and lost. We remember on this day in particular, the witness of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who taught us that we are all held in an inescapable network of mutuality. 
We give you thanks, O God, for all of our connections and for all of those who light signal fires of compassion and reconciliation. May our lights join with their light that we may keep each other warm and fuel the hopes of future generations. These things we pray in your name, our beloved creator, creator of beloved community. Amen. Now, friends, of course, we cannot pass our beautiful old boxes around for an offering. So this day, I invite you to send your offerings to the church at P.O. Box 301, Phippsburg, Maine, 04562, uh, or drop them by the office uh, when you can. And thank you for your ongoing support of all our ministries and missions. I offer a prayer that all of our gifts, all of our time and talents and energies, all of the resources we share may be blessed by God and shining with God's love, bringing warmth into the world. Amen. Before I share the words of scripture and our message for today, one little note, you're probably wondering why I haven't taken down my tree. Well, for reasons that will probably become clear in the sermon, I still need a little bit of extra light in the season. And so we've taken off all the ornaments except for the songbirds. And this is now, as long as my wife puts up with it in the house, our epiphany tree. The tree came from one of our church members um, in Phippsburg, and it is wonderful to have this green shining witness in our home. Now I'd like to share with you our scripture for today. Our guiding scripture comes from the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Christians at Corinth. It was a diverse community at Corinth. The Christians who gathered there had not always been Christians, of course. Many of them had been uh, participants in other pagan faiths that were common around the Roman Empire. Um, many of them had been faithful Jewish um, gatherers and practitioners of that faith. Um, and there were people who had not come from any faith tradition, but who had been drawn by the message of Jesus Christ into that gathering of faith. Well, people brought all of the baggage of their backgrounds, as Christians always do, and they brought them into the community of faith. Uh, particularly, there was strife being caused by wealthier, previously pagan uh, members of the congregation who were really used to getting the best of everything and used to being the center of attention and used to thinking that their gifts were better than everyone else's. Some of them in particular seemed to be wanting everyone else to understand that the gift of speaking in tongues was better than any other spiritual gift that anyone could have. And so into this situation, the Apostle Paul sent his letter with love. So we're reading from the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one is speaking by the Spirit of, no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, 
and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one of the individually, just as the Spirit chooses. Please be with me in prayer. With all our gifts, from all our vantage points, O oh God, help us to hear how your Spirit calls us to be in the world. Help us to tune our ear to all that you call us to do and be, that we may be united in your spirit of love. Amen. What a week. Volcanoes erupting, tsunamis forming, winter storm systems forming and reforming, the predictions changing constantly, and a hostage situation developing at a Texas synagogue. The schools and hospitals were in ongoing overwhelm with the surge in COVID cases. I turned on my computer nervously to check for messages and news, death notices, surgical updates, test results, and there it was, a spider web against a background of mist and soft greens, every strand of silk hung with bright beads of condensation, as fine as any string of pearls. Life may hang in the balance, and the world may feel as if it is on fire, but my friend across the Atlantic was moved to share a photo taken on a long walk in the English countryside. She had no idea how much I needed that spider web. Yesterday was a hard day for so many, and for so many different reasons. For me, it was a morning of frustration while Marsha Clark and I tried to wrangle the various technologies required to live stream our worship services online. As you can tell, we're still working on it. In the afternoon, I came home and signed into Zoom for a virtual memorial service for my older brother on what would have been his 53rd birthday. This weekend marks the one-year anniversary of his death as well. He was a man of such diverse connections that it took a Buddhist meditation teacher, a Jewish death doula, and a UCC pastor to coordinate his bicoastal memorial. It was hard and hilarious and sad exhausting and holy. My dad told the story of locking the freezer to keep my brother from eating all of the ice cream and my brother figuring out how to unlock the freezer lid with one of his Legos. The Buddhist meditation teacher described my brother as a madman, but in the best possible way. And others agreed that indeed he was crazy about food crazy about the beauty of the world, crazy about compassion, crazy about connection. When Paul wrote to the Christian community at Corinth, he was addressing a group as diverse as that online memorial, people with all kinds of different backgrounds, rich and poor, even enslaved and free, each with their own preconceived notions. Some had grown up in wealthy pagan households and were used to getting the best of everything. The virtue of humility in Christian community was a new thing for them. Some had been soldiers and the idea of making and seeking peace between people felt both intriguing and kind of bizarre. But the love of Christ had drawn them all into community. And now they had to learn to practice what Jesus had preached, 
Each person had to step beyond the solid foundations they'd known in order to make and strengthen new attachments. They were called to create a new design together in faith, like a spider's web. When you look at a spider's web, it's easy to focus on the gaps. The design is full of what artists might describe as negative space. A tiny bit of silk threaded through a whole lot of empty air. Yet those slim filaments change everything around them once the design is in place. Air currents are slowed, deflected, even diverted. Even in the driest of places, water droplets can be caught and held. Dust and debris can catch on the sticky threads so that the webs become air filters as well as nets to catch a meal. And if you can set aside your busyness and watch the interplay of lives that move in that small space, it can be awe-inspiring. It is a place of drama, a place of beauty, a place of peace, a place of nourishment, a place of transformation. Friends, you know how it was for the Corinthians and how it is for us. It's so easy to focus on the gaps. The spaces between where we are and where we want to be can feel utterly overwhelming. I know I'm not alone in wanting our church to be full of people, every pew filled with people singing and praying in close proximity with hearty handshakes and a few hugs after the service, everyone's face fully visible and the usual spread of delicious treats afterward to fuel our fellowship. Yet even when we are once again forced into physical distance, I want to bear witness to something beautiful. Every glaring gap is edged by the slim, strong, filaments of faith. I can see where you have drawn them, each of you stretching out a line to so many others. Some of them are so fine they're almost invisible, but I can see them. The soup delivered to a doorstep that brings so much life-giving love beyond a simple meal. The phone call that stops a spiral of despair or helps someone choose one day at a time to hold on to sobriety. The elder who listens to a young person's fears and dreams and reassures them that they are capable, worthy of love and a source of pride. The anonymous donor who buys a coat or fills a fuel tank or keeps a roof over someone's head. And the public advocates who empower others to work for change. We don't all bring the same things to this godly work, this daily practice of Christian community. We depend on each other's diverse gifts. And the Apostle Paul reminds us that we don't even need to believe exactly the same things to be part of this community. If our practice leads us toward good, if we contribute to healing, if our words are loving and kind, then they come from God and we are united and guided by the same Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts but the same Spirit. Varieties of services, but the same Lord. Varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. So, keep on keeping on, you beautiful people of God. Keep on being crazy about compassion crazy about seeking justice and restoration, crazy about peacemaking. Even if you feel like you're hanging from a thread, that thread may be stronger and more connected than you think. 
with other connections holding it in place. On a day of hard news and stored up grief, a photo from across the Atlantic helped bind up my broken heart. Every act of kindness, every gift you share, every investment of energy makes a difference. The negative space, the pain and gaps of the world may loom large, but we are woven together with a greater loom. Every strand held in place by the power of love, Christ's love, Christ's power. Like that beautiful spider web, our church, our community, and all our connections beyond will continue to flourish in a spirit blessed space, a heart space of drama and beauty and peace, a place of nourishment, a place of transformation. Amen. Now, my friends, all that we do is infused with the love of God. And I invite each of you to go from this heart space into the work and play and rest of your days. Go carrying the light and warmth of God's love. Go empowered to be part of that fiery hope. Go remembering that you are part of that web of connection. And go in peace. Amen.